You sat down and you said something fascinating to me. You said people are fatigued with this story. Yeah. How on earth are people fatigued with this story? We're not even into the kind of foothills of it yet. Well, not in terms of results, yeah. anyway. I think there obviously has been, over the last decade since the financial crisis, a lot of work on women on boards, a lot of, you know, they've had more recently the Me Too saga. I think, uh, if I'm honest, I think that one of the problems we have making more progress now is that people, as a bit of yawn goes on. You know, people are like, oh, no, not that diversity thing again. Today's event has been great, not least because it's been about lots of other aspects of equality and diversity. But as you say, we're kind of in the foothills still of making real progress, particularly when it comes to women in finance, women running money. Yeah. Um, you know, you've got lots of women in the newsroom here, but you know, there aren't lots I, of women doing big jobs in many sectors. It's not going to change overnight. But so how? How? I, uh, and again, kind of to, back to that point about fatigue. This isn't going to be. A sprint. Things aren't going to change quickly. So, how, how therefore, do we sustain progress and well, make sure that it does actually happen? As you say, there, there's a long way to go. Well, I think there's two things. One is the sort of like the stick bit and having car um, a carrot as well to incentivize. Yep. So the stick, you know, Bloomberg again has the gender equality index. People are now reporting on gender pay gap, obviously, here in the UK. And there is a sort of sense that you need to kind of show that you mean something about this. And then I think on a more sort of hopefully uh, motivational uh, side of things, I think involving men more, particularly when it comes to women's equality. Um, most of the young men I know, and I speak at lots of schools, universities, business schools, they say they want work-life balance as well. They want to play a part in their future family's upbringing. They don't want to work every hour, and if they do work really hard, they want a great career, but they want to work smartly using technology. So I think that's a great societal shift that will enable us to refresh the narrative about this. But in the meantime, it has been great seeing lots of men in the audience there today. Absolutely. Helena, you're a fantastic example, having you know gone from Schroeder's to head up fixed income at Newton. And you manage your own fund and you also establish the 30% club and there's just so much about your career that is something to watch. Where do you direct young women these days that want to learn how to do what you've done, who want to get educated and sort of follow that kind of path? Well, I do think it's um, a very individual matter. And I think the most uh, universal advice that I give young women when they ask me is don't try to be like a man. <laughs> and I do think that certainly women in my generation, most of us sort of try to fit in with the status quo. We sort of tried to lean into the table that existed rather than try and change it. And actually, that somewhat diminished our contribution, that we actually haven't made a, a, a positive impact. We've just been trying to sort of fit in um, and I suppose not to be noticed quite so much. I think we have a great opportunity now uh, there is so much upheaval in the world that we need different perspectives. We need women and men working out solutions. And I just encourage young women, um, you know, if you don't feel that confident, create your allies and a network around you, um, people who can, you know, nudge you into going for that next job. But most of all, don't just try to be an honorary man. Helena, are these improvements only things that can be done in a bull market, in developed economies where the labor force is strong? I don't think so, actually. I think if you look at many emerging markets, obviously there are a lot of differences um, depending on where you're looking, but there are quite a lot of matriarchal societies. And I think that what we need to guard at, though, is, make, is a sense of there's only one uh, approach to this that will work. I think it's very important when you're looking at a global phenomenon like gender inequality to recognize that we are in different places, at different, um, in different countries, in different regions, um, and not to be too imperial about it and say this is the only way forward. Um, I am a bit worried that if we hit an uh, economic downturn, if um, market prices are, uh, fall, then people will withdraw from what they see as a kind of nice to have. We haven't got quite far enough yet in the game, I think, to have everybody accept that this is just part of what it takes to be commercially successful in the next decade or so. OK, you bring up the, the economy and the wider mm. story, so let's, let's put your investing hat on. Um, do you see that coming? Um, the, the Global markets over the last few weeks have started to, to really aggressively price in a Fed rate cut. Um, the downturn apparently is coming. Is that the Helena Morrissey view of the world right now? Well, I think that we are likely to, you know, we're late cycle, and even if we didn't have any of the political upheavals that we have, then we'd be likely to be at least marking time and perhaps uh, struggling to make such headway. We've got full employment in many developed countries. We're still getting no com companies. You've had great results from Walmart and so forth today that are individually doing well. So I feel that it's more a tussle between 
you know, businesses doing quite well, those were the spot, the big trends in the world today um, versus the politics. And I think that the markets have become inextricably linked with uh, yeah. political dialogues. And we've seen that, you know, the last, well, years, months, um, and that's just going to continue. So, so how do you invest? So, so, so you guys invest huge quantities of money into the markets, yet we are now in a, in a world where it seems that fundamentals play second fiddle. That, that as you say, politics, the news cycle, appears to be becoming shorter and shorter and shorter, tweet to tweet to tweet, whatever it is, seems to be driving these markets. And certainly that, there's a lot of evidence of that of late. How do you invest kind of for the long term in a world that is driven by such a short term kind of story, that, that incredibly short news cycle? I think you have to recognize and ident seek to identify the big sweeping themes. And we can all see them. I mean, technology obviously is yep. an ongoing one. We obviously have security um, as a related theme. And then, of course, we've got the big shift towards a, a lower carbon economy. We also have, I think, you know, I've said before, women are the trade of the decade. They're one of the trades maybe of the decade. But, you know, we've also got a big shift in society towards more gender equality. And I think a successful investment stance, these days is very much in tune with some of these, they might sound a bit sort of softer themes. Um, it's about sustainable things, uh, literally, um, not just sustainable returns. But I think we've only just seen the scratch the surface at this stage of the gains that can be made by shifting, for example, to cleaner energy.